Hey everyone, this is Derek, and in this video we're going to look at loans, and before I do that, I'm going to do kind of the last little recap of um, how to tell which of these formulas to use in which instance. So basically we have four things, um, 6, 1 through 6, 4, and we had compound interest, that's, you can tell that one because we had, we make one deposit, we're depositing a lump sum, we're going to have some money later. In 6, 2 we had future value annuities. For that, we're going to depo make deposits over time so that we have some money later. So that'd be like saving for your kid's college. A payout annuity, that's where we have a lump sum of money right now today, and then I want to live off that. So say I um, won the lottery, I have this award, and now I'm going to set up as an annuity so I get payments over time. So for that, that one's going to be many withdrawals. So you have the money, it's paying you. With a loan, you don't have the money. You're borrowing the money, and you're going to pay it back over time. So with a loan, that is going to be lots of payments going from you to something else. But when you have an annuity, the payments are going from the annuity to you. It's, it's your money. Okay, for a loan formula, I think we just have one new quantity, and that's that uh, A sub N, and this is going to be the amount of the debt. So it's how much money you're financing. Um, other than that, I think it's all stuff we've used before. This first example we have, um, you can afford a $1,200 a month mortgage payment. You found a 30-year loan at 7% interest, so how big a loan can you afford? So you know what your budget looks like, and you know your terms, and you're wondering how much money you can borrow. So let's see, we're going to have principal, I'm sorry, payments are going to be $1,200. Time is a 30-year loan. Rate is 7%. Um, we're going to be paying once a month, so uh, M is going to be 12. And then remember, we have those two calculated quantities. Um, I is going to be the rate divided by the number of periods, so 0 0.07 over 12. And then N is the number of periods times, uh, sorry, the number of periods, compounding periods times the number of years. So it's going to be 360. And then next, I'm just going to cut away and I'll get everything set up in the formula and come back. Okay, so here's all this information set up in here as a big, ugly um, wad of math. And then we would just take that wad of math, get into a calculator, divide that over. So I'm just using this formula right here. And then when I do that, I get the amount that we are able to finance as 180369 cents. Uh, part B is how much total money would you will you pay the loan company? So if we look back, we were going to pay them twelve hundred a month, and we we're going to make three hundred and sixty payments. That's that n, or you could just go twelve times thirty, same thing. Um, so the total amount is going to be four hundred thirty-two thousand um, dollars. How much money is the interest? So you're paying them back. $432,000, you're actually borrowing about 180,000. So if we do the 432 minus the 180, that comes out 251,630.92. So that's how much you're actually paying an in interest on that house. So interest is a bummer. Okay, so this one goes, Taylor wants to buy a car for $52,000. She's planning on making monthly payments of 900 bucks uh, so we know her payments are going to be 900 a month for five years. So that's going to be her T. Interest rate is 4%. And then compounded monthly. So M is 12. And um, so then our calculated quantities are going to be uh, 12 times 5. So that would be our N is 60 and then 0.04 divided by 12. So that's gonna be our I. And then what we're trying to figure out is um, um, how much will her down payment need to be to make that happen? So that's, it's what we're going to find isn't, um, what we're gonna find is the A sub N and that was the amount that we borrowed. And this is asking for the down payment. So the number that we get is going to be how much she actually borrowed on the car. And we know how much the car cost. 
So then if we do how much the car costs minus how much she borrowed, that difference is how much she put down. So we'll find this and then we'll have one more step to go after that. So then I'll cut away and, and fill this all out and come back. Okay, so I just have everything set up in the formula. So again, I put all this in the calculator and then go 900 divided by that number. And then that gives me a sub N as 48869.16. But again, that's that's not the answer in this case because that wasn't the question. It wasn't, um, the question wasn't how much money she borrowed. The question is how much does she have to put down? So we'd have 52,000. And then take away this. So the price would be 52,000. And then we're taking away the loan amount. And then that equals the down payment. Okay, and then the last thing in this section is unpaid balance um, or payoff amount for a loan. Uh, so this would be a situation like you're so many payments into, um, you know, like a car loan and you want to see how much it is to just pay it off. So that's kind of what we're finding with this. Um, here, the new quantity is A sub N minus K. So what that's going to do is it's going to get, it would show the number of payments for that unpaid balance. Okay, so here we have um, a young executive is going to purchase a vacation property for investment purposes. She needs to borrow $83,000 for 30 years at 4.6% compounded monthly and will make monthly payments of that much and we're rounding everything to decimals. What is the unpaid balance after nine months? So she's gonna like take out this loan for this much money and then nine months in, we wanna see um, how much money she still owes on the loan. And it would be most of it, right? Because it's a 30 year loan. So let's get our list going and then we'll get that piece. So we know it is, um, T was 30 years. Uh, and I just wrote, and why I just did that? Because I was thinking about the 83,000 in my head and then I needed to loop back and explain why I wasn't using it. Okay, so the 83,000, I'm not using that because we don't actually care how much she borrowed. Um, it doesn't show up anywhere in the formula. We have, um, how much she is, how much her payments are, and we have um, her unpaid balance, but the original amount actually is not a part of the, the the problem. So, okay, we'll need it down here, but we don't need it for this piece. Um, our rate is zero point zero four six percent compounded monthly, so we know M is twelve, and we have monthly payments. There's our payments of four two five point four nine. And then, um, yeah, so, oh, our two calculated values are going to be um, I equals 0 0.046 and then over 12. And then um, in this case, we have K, and K is the number of payments made, and so K will be 9. And so now I'll cut away and get everything set up. Okay, so here this is with, with everything filled in. I'll take a second and explain this A, N minus K deal. So remember, N is the total number of payments. So like on a 30-year mortgage, that's going to be um, 360 payments, uh, which I don't think I actually found N when I did this. Nope, I should have found N. So N, oops, N should have equaled 360. Um, and so the N minus K in this, what it's doing is it's saying we're going to take 360 payments on the whole loan and then take away nine payments. So we're finding the amount when there are 351 payments left. That's what that little chunk of math is saying. And then the rest of it is all just throw it in a calculator. And so this came out to 82,018.17. So that is how much money she still owes on the 83,000. Uh, during this time period, how much interest did she pay? Okay, so um, we're going to do the 83000 and take away this much because this is what she still owes on the loan. So this isn't the interest. This means she paid off $981.83. So that's the principal on the loan. That's how much she's paid off. She still owes this much. But she's made nine payments at 425, right? 
49. And so the total amount of money she's paid is $3,829.41. So this is how much she paid. And then this is the principal. And then we take the difference of those two. And then when we subtract, we're going to get uh, 2,847.58. And that's going to be the interest. Because again, this is how much she gave them. This is how much it took off the loan. So all the rest of that, that's the interest that she's paying on that loan.